And we are back with some more Seattle Kraken franchise mode. And in this one, I think we are going to just advance through the entire year number one because I am fully anticipating to be last in the entire league because when you take a look at the, our player's ability, there's really no one here besides the goaltenders. In goal, we're really good. We have Odinger, we have Saros, we have Hoffer. I, I'm really looking to grow those guys, but outside of our guys in goal... There's no one on this roster currently anyway who I foresee being on this team long term. So the way I see it, we'll go through preseason. Whoever plays well will get a roster spot. Whoever doesn't, <laughs> just getting traded away for a draft pick more than likely. And when we take a look at the quality of other teams' rosters, I mean, we really don't even compare. <laughs> other teams just blow us out of the water here in most cases. And even teams that don't really have a stud per se like Arizona who Oliver Ekman Larson is their best player at a three and a half star ability even they they have several three star players that they can rely on whereas with us we have three three star players one of them's our goaltender <laughs> and then the other is a 36 year old in the form of Eric Stahl and then Tanner Pearson as well so uh, once again there's really not much to look forward to this year besides getting as high of a draft pick as possible. And when we take a look at our unsigned players, we still have Luke Hughes and Coronado, who are unsigned currently. They are pretty close to being NHL ready, both one and a half star ability, but I think we'll just let them play out the year in college. Luke Hughes in Michigan and Coronado with Harvard. So hopefully they both have good years because our team as it is, most likely will not. <laughs> Even with the likes of Gerard Gallant being our coach, I, I do not foresee this being a competitive team, at least not this year. So <laughs> we're just going to go through the entire season, really, I think, in this episode. And currently, our captain is Eric Stahl. We did have to assign a captain. You cannot go without a captain in this game. So, so I just made it Eric Stahl for the time being. That will likely change <laughs> in a couple years' time at maximum. And then you also have Pelik as the first alternate. And then Jesper Fast as the second alternate. So that being said, we'll get through preseason. We'll see who plays the best. And we'll see who is going to be shipped out before the before the regular season even starts. But we're at the end of preseason now. And we are going to be making some cuts. So defensively, uh, everyone besides Braun really was solid defensively. It looks like as we take a look at defensive grades. Yeah, 80, 74, 74, 73. A bunch of guys in the high 60s as well. And then Braun down there at 57. So I think we can send him to the AHL. He'll probably be placed on waivers, but whatever. And forward-wise, there's a lot more guys who stand out in a negative way. <laughs> you have Bailey, Hathaway, who are in the 40s defensively and not contributing much offensively either. So I think we're going to send down Hathaway. We'll also send down Bailey. Ernie is at a 50, but he had a 63 offensive grade, and that's one of the better offensive grades on the team. And then Nick Paul, he had a 49 defensive grade, but he actually had the best offensive grade on the team with a 65, or tied, anyway, with Duclair. So we are definitely going to be keeping him on the roster, at least for right now. Overall, Cole Sherwood wasn't too impressive, only had a 54 and a 54 in both categories. So I think we'll send him to the AHL as well. So I think that's all the cuts that we're making at forward because that leaves 13 forwards now. We have eight defensemen and we have three goaltenders. I don't think Hoffer, yeah, Hoffer didn't play at all in that preseason. Now, it is worth noting that I do not have any control over the Lions, basically. That is all up to Gerard Gallant. So whatever he sees fit is what the Lions will be. All I can do really is... AI set roles and create lines from lineups. That's the best I can do. Otherwise, the coach has complete control over the lines. There's not much else I can do about that. So I think we might need to send down one of our defensemen here. Honestly, it's kind of tough. It's a tough decision here because defensively, most of these guys look pretty solid in the preseason. Definitely not sending down Ajo. He was our best defenseman by far in the preseason. Not sending down Pelek, even though for some reason right now he's scratched. So I don't know what Gerard Gallant's thinking there, but hopefully he gets him dressed for the regular season because he was definitely one of our better defensive defensemen. I think for right now, we'll send Hoffer down to the AHL just because I don't know how much playing time he's going to get up here with the likes of Odinger and Saros being up here. So we'll do that for right now so that we have 23 players on the roster. So that being done, we'll keep... 
eight defensemen for right now. And then we'll also have the 13 forwards. But I would at some point like to get Hopper up here to the NHL because he did have that 924 last year with St. Louis. And honestly, I feel bad sending him down. But we do have Odinger. We have Saros. And it doesn't look like, you know, it doesn't look like Gerard Gallant is going to be playing him anyway. So a bunch of players have just been placed on waivers. And the guy who I am interested in personally is Adrian Kepe. He is a three-star current ability, three-star potential, so he's not going to get much better. But he's 25 years of age, great contracts. And last year in the simulation, he had 27 points in 77 games and a 64 grade with the LA Kings. So honestly, I think he is someone who I would want to pick up. We are very weak at board. Well, I mean, then again, we're weak almost everywhere. (laughs) So I think I would like to place a claim for Adrian Kempe. And there you go, Adrian Kempe, now an official member of of the Seattle Kraken, and he is injured, unfortunately, to start the season, but it is only day-to-day, so for right now, we'll just place him on the injury list, and then when he comes back, we'll send uh, one of these other forwards down. I I really don't care who it is at the moment, because there are quite a few unimpressive forwards (laughs) in our lineup, so I mean, there's there's Sturm, there's Seuss, there's Weiss, Plenty of guys to send down in place of Adrian Kempe. So with that being said, I think we will get on to our first game ever, which will be against the St. Louis Blues on September 21st. So the schedule is shifted quite a bit compared to usual. It does not start in October this year. So what we're going to do, we're going to view our first game ever against St. Louis. And then after that, we're just going to simulate through the rest of the year. So here we go. Game against St. Louis, our current lines are Chushkin, Stahl, and Fast on the first line, along with Pelik and Nudivara as the first defensive pair. I believe Saros is in net. All right, we are in the quick simulation. Let's do it. First period is now underway. Who will get the first goal in the history of the Seattle Kraken? Come on, boys. Power play for St. Louis. Nothing doing. Another power play. And that is the end of one with no score. All right, second period now underway. Any goals for Seattle? And that is a goal for St. Louis. Brandon Biro from Krug and Tarasenko. Resuming second period simulation. And there is Anthony Duclair from Alexander. Kokolchev is the first goal in Seattle Kraken history. And that is the end of two. 1-1 one, one is the current score. Third period now underway. And there is a goal by Vladimir Tarasenko from Krug. Makes it 2-1 early in the third period. And then Valachushkin ties it up from Jensen and Stahl. All right, we've got quite a game here. And there's a goal by Kokolchev from Bowie and Duclair. All right, we're up 3-2, to two, but nope, not anymore, <laughs> says Braden Shun, who gets the goal from Robert Thomas and Clem Costin. And that makes it 3-3 three, three in the middle of the third period. Come on, boys. And Cody Eakin gets the goal unassisted. We are now up 4-3. Will anything happen in the dying seconds of the game? No. We get the win. 4-3 to three in our first game ever. So, good way to start the GM mode for sure. So, obviously, if we can continue this, that'd be great. But, at least for this season, I'm going to keep my expectations in check. <laughs> so, with Kempe returning from injury, I think we're going to either send Beagle to the AHL or trade him. Because he really has not been great in the three games that we have played so far. And, oh, geez, Hoffer's very angry right now. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I would expect that given how he performed last year. So we're, we're definitely going to have to get him on the NHL roster at some point this year. And unfortunately, Jay Beagle has a no-trade clause. <laughs> I didn't even realize that until now. So what we're going to do is just simply send him to the AHL. <laughs> so we are on February 1st, and as expected, we are not a very good team. We are 19-33-9. and nine. In fact, that leaves us last in the entire league. So with that being said, we're going to start selling some guys off, and that would include basically anyone who's unhappy, who I don't see having a future on this team. So Murray, Shen, and Sturm for sure. I don't know about Hoffer yet, because I would really like to give him a chance. I just, I don't know if he's going to get the chance, just because of how well the likes of Saros and Odinger have been playing this year. I'm not sure if he's going to get that chance. Uh, Odinger has a 915 this year. In 30 games played, Saros is a 907. I mean, again, I, I would like to see what he's about in the NHL, but don't know if it's going to happen. So we might honestly have to trade Hoffer for that reason alone. We we would be able to get some pretty nice back for him as well. He has the three and a half star potential with the two star ability currently, and he's having a good year down there in the NHL. But 
definitely an NHL goaltender, and I don't know if we have the space for him. So, like I said, we may just have to trade him. Once again, not because I want to, but purely because I don't know if we'll be able to get a spot for him. So, what we'll do first, we'll offer out Murray, Shen, and Sturm. So, it looks like the best we can get for Brett Murray is a six-round pick from either Chicago, Philadelphia, or San Jose. And I'll just trade him to Philadelphia since they are not in our conference. Complete trade. Pavel Shen, we could get either a fifth round pick from a variety of teams that are offering fifths. Or we could take the 19-year-old defenseman Noah Meyer, who is a two-star potential with the B scouting grade. And then there is also from New York, Vladislav Lukashevich <laughs> with the two-star potential with the A scouting grade, but the D for likelihood of actually reaching the two-star ability. So for me, I think I'll just take the pick. We'll take Toronto's pick. And basically our only reasonable option for Nico Sturm is a seventh round pick in either 2023 or 2022. I think we'll take Buffalo's 2022 pick. So there you go. Brent Murray goes to Philadelphia for a sixth round pick. Then you have Pavel Shen going to Toronto for a fifth. And Buffalo gets Nico Sturm for a seventh. Stacking up on late round picks, but I would like to get... Something a bit better in there. And I think with that, we're just going to trade Mr. Hoffer. Because, once again, I don't see a spot for him. With the way that Saros and Odinger have been playing. Especially on this team, right? So what we'll do, we'll find a team that needs a goaltender. And we'll see how much they're willing to give up for Hoffer. So Buffalo needs a goalie, so we'll give them Hoffer in exchange for a draft pick. Let's see how much they're willing to give up. What about a second? A well-balanced offer. Alright, so we probably won't be able to get a first, yeah. I didn't think so. So Buffalo rejects our trade offer for Hoffer for a second round pick. So we're going to have to discuss the trade again. And I think we'll add late round picks in this game aren't usually all that good. So I think I'll give up a fifth from Toronto and they will probably accept this offer. Uh, what about Buffalo's seventh? Just give them it back. Yeah, we could just give them their seventh right back and take their second for Joel Hoffer. I think that'll... Work out nicely. And there it is. They have accepted our trade offer for their second round pick. And they get Joel Hoffer and their seventh round pick back. Hoffer, I hope you get your playing time over there in Buffalo because it just was not happening here. Complete trade. It looks like now we have the Olympics starting. I was not approached with any offers from any teams. So <laughs> looks like we won't be managing any Olympic teams for the time being. But should be pretty interesting to see the results nonetheless. We do have two players that are playing in the Olympics, both Yusei Saros and Olimata for Team Finland. So apparently, for the Montreal Canadiens, Jesperi Kotkaniemi is on waivers. <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't look like he's doing that well. Only five points in 43 games played, so I guess they just gave up on him. Minus 15 this year, 56th grade. But you know what? He's only 21. And at the point where we're at in the, fran- in the franchise... Let's claim him. I mean, there's really no reason not to. (laughs) We do not really have too much depth at forward, if any, as a matter of fact. So may as well take a chance on him, see if he can actually live up to his potential. So unfortunately, with picking up just Barry Kakaniemi, we did lose Dale Weiss to waivers to the Anaheim Ducks, but that's fine. Weiss wasn't playing well at all, so that's why he went on waivers. And we now have a younger player in Kakaniemi, so hopefully... He ends up working out for us. We're at the trade deadline and there's really not much we can do given that we are currently almost at the cap floor. And anyone who I trade or anyone who I want to trade anyway would put us below the cap floor and that would just cause all kinds of issues. And I really don't think we would get that much back for them anyway. So I think we're done at the trade deadline. We are just going to move on through the rest of the season. We'll see what happens in the Olympics, of course. But besides that, I think we're done here. There you go. The Olympics have finished. And, of course, in the final, it was Canada versus the USA, because, of course, it was. And the USA comes out on top in the gold medal game with the score of 5-3. to three. So, of course, gold goes to the U.S., silver goes to Canada, and bronze goes to the Czech Republic. Uh, wow, goals for per game, 13.72. So, after the trade deadline, we did have a pretty big trade go down between Boston and Carolina. Jake DeBrusque goes to Carolina in exchange for Jacob Slavin. So we have an unfortunate injury here that may affect us going into next season. Adrian Kempe with a broken kneecap indefinitely (laughs) suffered on March 22nd. So that honestly may carry into next season. 
That is unfortunate because he's been a really good player for us. He's been by far our best forward for sure. 67 offensive grade, 67 defensive grade. So we are now at the end of the regular season. We finished 26, 45 and 11, 63 points by far last in the league. So we do have the best odds at the first overall pick and boy, do we need it because <laughs> this is just not a good team in general. Obviously, we have some good pieces like Saros and Odinger. Pelic on defense, he was really good this year with the 78 defensive grade. There are some other guys who I wouldn't mind keeping as well for at least a few more years. And as we can see by the <laughs> statistics, our top point getter was Anthony Duclair with 44 points on the season. Everyone is heavily in the minus. You have Eric Stahl with 42 points, 36 for Nachushkin, 32 for Fast. Yeah, brutal. Very brutal. <laughs> As we take a look at goaltender stats, uh, Odinger with a 9-12, same for Saros in 50 games played. Saros had five shoutouts, Odinger had three. I'm surprised they managed any, <laughs> given this team, especially to maintain, for both of them to maintain over a 9-10 on this team. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> Our season would have been much worse if not for these two. So I definitely want to keep both of them on board. But I would like to get Kempe re-signed. I would also like to re-sign Odinger. So I will do that right now. Odinger wants three years. I guess we'll just meet his demand. I mean, it's there's not much point in taking him down in salary because it's not necessary <laughs> at the moment. And it's, it's not like he's asking for too much either. So we may as well just submit this offer to him. As for Adrian Kempe, he wants three years at 5.5. Honestly, he deserves a pretty big raise, given what he was able to do this year. He did have 30 points in 67 games on this team, which, if he had played a full 82 games, I think he would have been up there with our top point scorers. And in the future, when we do have a competitive team, I think he'll be a, a pretty big part of it. So I guess we'll just give him three years for $5.45 million, and he will re-sign for that. I'll probably also be re-signing Bowie, McNabb, and Mata. Chushkin, maybe. Now look at two of our top prospects in Hughes and Coronado. They're basically NHL ready at this point. They both have the two-star ability now. Let's see their stats for this year. Uh, Luke Hughes in 29 games got 21 points on the back end. And what about Coronado? He had 39 points in 34 games with Harvard. So both of them looking very nice. Uh, I'm hoping they'll both be able to make our roster next year. I mean, offensive read for Coronado is already at 17. He was a solid second round pick. And then a look at Luke Hughes, still got that 19 offensive read, shooting range at 17, passing 16. He looks really good as well. That being said, we'll end this one off here. Remember to hit like and subscribe. And in the next one, we will get to the off season of year number one. Of course, get through the drafts. And hopefully we, we will be selecting at first overall to get the next franchise changing player. See you guys then.